Hello and good evening. Welcome to Stutter Park TV. I'm your host, NJW, and I'm back with another gruesome, horrific deaths of Chicago. Let's check it out. On June 9, 2003, Avery's 21, his cousin Vincent 20, and their friend Max 16 were all hanging out at, at Avery's home. While there, Avery's made his mother leave the home. Hours later, around 2 a.m., Avery's mother returned, possibly high off drugs, wanted to show Avery's what it's like to be homeless. Using a lighter, she ignited a rag in the basement, covering up the clothes. The flames rapidly engulfed the house, killing Avery's, Vincent, and Matt. Avery's youngest brother, Louis, escaped with minor injuries by jumping out the window. This is the mother that killed her son, his cousin, and his friend. Let's see what she got out of it. Jane was arrested the very next day for the murders of her son, Avis, his cousin, Vincent, like I said, and their teenage friend, Kevin. Ashley, who was homeless at the time of their arrest, told police she knew people were inside the two-story building when she set it on fire. She was sentenced to life without possibility of parole on charges of three counts of first-degree murder and one count of aggravated arson. Erica Holliman Cruz Flores. On March 18, 2003, six days after turning 23, Erica was walking to a friend's house in the 3,000 block of Average Avenue when she was attacked by a random man. Her body was discovered by a passerby, saw a leg hanging out of, out of a trash bin. She was raped, beaten, and stabbed. A broken knife and a chunk of brick was laying next to her body. Three months later, 81-year-old Cruz Flores was found in her home by her daughter. She was raped, beaten, and stabbed 18 times. DNA showed that the same person that had attacked both women, but the attackers identified was not known. Identity, I mean. Felipe Mendoz Cruz. On November the 12th, 2005, Cruz was arrested two days after the DNA connected by the unrelated arrest linked him to the killings of Erica and Cruz. Both attacks were on the Logan Square neighborhood where Cruz himself also lived. Police arrested Cruz and an aggravated assault charge that later was dropped. While in custody, officials took a sample of his DNA. That sample was submitted to the state crime lab for analysis in January, but the DNA was not linked to the sample taken from the bodies of Harleman and Flores until that November. In 2007, this sick son of a bitch was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. I like you. Now, <sighs> this is a cold, cold world, ain't it? This man that killed a child and an elderly woman, and now he's doing life without the possibility of parole. Like you. And I want you. <laughs> now we can do this the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. <laughs> and my baker. On May 15, 2003, 25-year-old Baker was walked from her new boyfriend's home at the club when she was confronted by her baby father, who told her not to come around his block again. This is after Baker had an order of protection against the same baby father. During the confrontation on the 2000 block, 
of South Walcott Avenue. Becca was beaten about the head of the body with a baseball bat, leaving her face dripping blood. This is her killer, Lafayette Williams. Two weeks after the death of Baker, Baker's baby father, Adams, was arrested and charged after his homeboy, who witnessed the killing, folded. So, he, him and his partner, he, he watched them do it. He ended up folding like they always do. So, that's why you always need to fly along or, or not do the crime. So, let's see what happened to him. In 2005, Adams was sentenced to 45 years in prison on the charge of first-degree murder. May he rest in hell. Lawrence Raleigh. On February the 10th, 2004, 80-year-old Lawrence Raleigh told his grown son, Jeremy Raleigh, that the home they shared in, at the 100 block of West 12th Street was being sold and he had to move. After being asked to leave, Jerome belligerent his father with a metal pipe in the garage of the home. God damn. Jerome called the police the next day and said he found his father on the floor in the garage. Jerome allegedly gave a video statement implicating himself in the slaying. There is no update on information on Jerome at this time. Cherry Wilson. At 11.45 p.m. on January the 19th, 32-year-old Cherry Wilson was found dead in a burning garage in the 1600 block of South Campbell Avenue in Marquette Park. Wilson's body was in the garbage. To this day, Wilson's case to the death remain undetermined. Unidentified white male. On June, July 14, 2003, a 64-year-old white male was found unresponsive near the 4400 block of North Marine Drive around 350 with stab wounds to the head and neck. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. Chicago police are investigating a man's death in a lakefront park near Montrose Beach. They found his body with stab wounds. WGN's Gaynor Hall has a reaction on the discovery. The victim is a 64-year-old man. He was found stabbed to death in the baseball field here at Clarendon Park. I've lived in this neighborhood 18 years, and I love the neighborhood, but, you know, sometimes, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Around 5.30 this morning, the 64-year-old man was found on a baseball diamond, stabbed in the head and the neck. He was pronounced dead at the scene near Montrose and Marine Drive, just west of Montrose Beach. This is the second stabbing that happened in a matter of three weeks. So, I mean, we'd like to have something done. People who live in the area continuing to raise concerns. The circumstances surrounding this latest incident remain unclear. The man's body was on the field uncovered for hours, a jarring sight for residents who walk through the park every day. City data shows it's the first homicide in Uptown this year. Area 3 police detectives handling this ongoing investigation, working to find whoever's responsible and figure out why. Although the man's identif identifier has never been re revealed, someone actually took a picture of the body and also actually sent the picture to my inbox on IG. Jada Moore, oh no, what the happened to the baby? After moving to her grandparents' home in the 300 block of August Street in Park Forest for, from Georgia, in March 2003, five-year-old Jada Moore suffered straight physical abuse from her grandfather and his wife, mainly for salting her clothes. <clears throat> On July 14th, her grandfather called 911 and told them, I was beating my granddaughter and now she's out of it. What? Officers around found her laying on the couch completely nude. Paramedics performed CPR and the child was taken into the children's hospital where she was pronounced dead just before 9 a.m. that next morning. An autopsy found that the child had been bruised and scarred all over her body. The wounds were each various stages of healing. Man. She had wounds on her back. 
According to the prosecutor, this was hard to do. The autopsy would show that Jada suffered internal infusion pockets or contusions pockets in the back, buttocks, and legs. So they've been beating her like for the longest. So it sounded like they had been beating her since she'd been there. Because uh, they had beat her so bad that the, the uh, old wounds had healed. So why would you even take the baby if you was planning on beating the baby? If you didn't want her, you shouldn't have took her. Clint Wood and Lisa Sheriff Jones. Prosecutors saying in court that the physical abuse that ultimately led to the little girl's death began at least two and a half months ago, shortly yeah. after she moved in with them it, for it, what was supposed to be a temp. It had to, because her wounds had old wounds had healed. I knew I was wrong, but I mean they beat that baby the day she got there. Arrangements to allow her mother to improve her living situation back in Georgia. A five-year-old girl killed at the hands of her grandfather and his wife. That is what Cook County prosecutors said happened Friday night at this Park Forest home shortly before 11 p.m. when 62-year-old Clint Elwoods dialed 911 and told the dispatcher, and quote, I was beating my little granddaughter and now she is out of it. Identified as five-year-old Jada Moore, prosecutors say the little girl was found by police laying naked on a couch in the living room. She was rushed to a local hospital and then airlifted to Comer Children's Hospital, where she died Saturday. After about maybe 10 seconds of them being inside, the paramedics come rushing out with a little girl who appeared to be completely limp. I had never seen her, but I knew um, he had a grandchild, so I wasn't surprised to see a child there because I knew he had one. Following the discovery, police placed both Elwoods and his wife, 57-year-old Lisa Jones, in custody. The couples... Well, one thing about this situation is everybody's not meant to be a parent and everybody's not meant to be a grandparent. Some people's unfit from the gate, and they should never be allowed to be around kids. And this is an example of that. I sure hate this has happened to this little baby. And I hope she get her angel wings. People say investigators had taken custody of the girl on April the 5th to give her mother, who lives in Georgia, time to improve her situation there. Prosecutors say a post-arrest confession provided by Jones indicates the beating started about a month later, apparently provoked by several instances of the girl soiling herself, each one documented on a calendar found inside the home. Joyce Miller is a longtime friend of Clint Delwood's who came to court today wanting to hear firsthand what happened. It's sad. It's sad to see any, anyone. Uh, go through a trial and tribulation, especially when it's regarding a baby. So how is it a trial and tribulation if he beat her to death? Oh, no, I, this, is, well, this one was a hard one. This is a cold, cold world. Because they are both charged with first-degree murder and are facing a life sentence, the judge today ordered both of them held, excuse me, both of them held. Get it out. Bond. She about worse as me. This gorilla face bitch admitted to the boat that she and M. Wood had been beating Jada using a belt shoot in their hands to strike the child. Once officers returned to the couple's home, they discovered a belt, a pair of shoes, underwear, and a notarized letter from Jada's mother giving the parent grandparents custody of the school and the medical decisions. Robin Carroll, that mother, says she had no idea. Her father, Jada's grandfather, was capable of what he's been charged with. Jada had been staying with him while her mother started a new job in another state. With heavy hearts, loved ones, neighbors, and members of police gathered to remember a girl filled with light on this block where police say she encountered unspeakable darkness. This is a lot to deal with. Nobody is ever prepared to, especially to lose their child in that particular way. Like, I can't believe it. Kimberly Elwood's consoled at this vigil nearly a week. Now, see, I'm, I'm a firm believer, and this, just be, this is just my belief. I couldn't be on TV. 
pleading for anything when my child, I, I wouldn't be no good. I don't know how to stand when a parent could do that. Some parents are stronger than others. I know that. But it would be hard for me to be on TV knowing that I, I don't have my child anymore. Week after her daughter, Jada Moore, was found beaten unconscious on a couch at her grandfather's Park Forest home. She died a day later from a brain injury. That was my baby. That was my, that was my angel. Jada's grandfather, Clint Elwoods, and his wife, Lisa Jones, now charged with first-degree murder, allegedly told police they'd been beating Jada for months. In the home, police found a calendar documenting times Jada had soiled herself. What did she do? What did she do that was that bad? That's my question now. Jada had been staying with her maternal grandfather since March, while her mother began a new job in Georgia. Kimberly Elwood says she has no words for her father. I thought that man was a stand-up guy. He's really a monster. Tell me what you're eating. I'm eating some cake. Jada turned five in April. She loved all things Barbie and making people laugh. I absolutely loved my daughter. I adored her. And I want her to know, even up there, she is well-loved. Jada's mother said, Everybody has problems. Everybody have their up and downs in life because then no man will come with living. But you have to give yourself some accountability to what happened because it's she was your angel, but you didn't protect her like she was. That's just my. But uh, you know you can't speak on somebody's hurt and how they react to being hurt if you never went through something like that. I sure hate that happened to this little baby says she's still working to raise money for a funeral. She says she was planning next month to pick up Jada to bring her back home to Georgia. As the stated in previous video, some people just don't deserve to have kids. Leave them alone, let alone raise them. And that's a fact. With all that being said, I hope the two rotten hell together. Sick motherfuckers. Well, there you have it. My first episode of horrific, gruesome deaths in Chicago. I got a little emotional because of the little babies. I hate when stuff happens to babies and older people because they defenseless. They can't help themselves. And you have so many predators that prey on the weak, but then a leader strong alone because they know they'll fight back. This is my, like I said, this is my first episode of this um, I don't know how I'm going to continue to do this because this is hard on me. <laughs> Just reading this stuff is, and it's like 90 episodes of this. So this is like, if, if, I don't know. I don't, whew. God bless Chicago. That's all I can say. This your host, NJW. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And I'm looking, I'm not looking for another episode of this, but I do one. Thanks for tuning in to my reaction video. Have a great day.